Facebook ads are without a doubt the most efficient and effective way to get your agency clients results. And in this video, I'm going to be taking you through the A to Z of creating a campaign, setting up your creative, getting everything live and getting everything tracked on Facebook. So let's get straight into it. The first thing you have to do is set up a Meta Business Suite account. So I want you to think about Meta Business Suite as kind of like your hub, your HQ for everything Facebook or Meta ads. It's extremely easy to set up. It takes around five minutes. I'm not gonna go through it right now because I already have one set up for the purpose of this video, but it's extremely easy to do. It takes five minutes and that is where everything is going to be kept. That's where your ad accounts are gonna be. That's where your Instagram and Facebook pages are going to be hosted. And that is where everything is woven together. And it's gonna be where you keep you and your clients ad accounts. So now that we have that set up, it's going to look something like this. So when you go into Facebook Business Suite, you're going to be hit with a dashboard like this. And we're gonna start right at the very top in Business Portfolio Info. And funny enough, actually, Facebook have literally just updated this. It didn't used to look like this. They have just updated this, and it's kind of like a, a new, more modern theme. I think it looks a lot better than the older one, but a lot of people are taking a little while to get used to it. But I think it's pretty seamless and pretty good to use. The first thing you wanna do is add all of your agency or business details. So your legal business name, your address, your phone number, your website, and you also wanna verify your business. Now, if it's a brand new business suite account, Facebook won't let you verify it immediately because they kinda of wanna see if you're a real business and they kinda of wanna see you using the account first. As soon as you can, verify the account because that shows Facebook that you're a real person and it leads to you getting less restrictions and less rejections on your ads. The next thing you wanna do is go down to people. And this is where you're going to invite people to your business suite. Now you can see I'm in here, but you can invite your media buyers, you can invite your VAs, you can invite anyone you want in here, anyone who would be managing ads or needs to be in here, this is where you can invite them. And you simply go over to invite people, put in their email address, and then you assign access to them. You put them in whatever ad accounts they need to be in, mainly for media buyers. You know, there's nothing, no one else that would really need to be in here other than you and media buyers. Uh, maybe if you have a COO or maybe if you have a, a manager or something like that, but primarily media buyers. For partners, we're not gonna worry about that too much on this video. Partners is more for if someone is inviting an agency in, but that is not what we're not gonna worry about partners too much for now. It's more if you're in the ads manager or business suite of a brand and they're inviting someone in to run their ads, aka URI, that's what partners is. System users, we don't need to worry about for now. And then we go down to pages. So pages is where you add in either your page or the brand's page or whoever's page you're using to run the ads from. And it's very, very simple. I've added in a dummy page here, um, but you simply go over to ads and then you can go into add an existing Facebook page. Uh, let's say we are running ads for a roofing company. Let's just type in roofing. And if you see your roofing company, you just select it here. So whatever, I've just put an example here. Let's say it's, you know, Texas roofing or California roofing, whatever you put it in and you'll see the page and you just select it and you add it in. It's very, very simple. Then once that page is in there, it will look like this. And then you can assign people, connect assets, really, really intuitive, really simple. Facebook have made this as simple as possible because they want people spending money on their platform. They want as many people on here as possible. They want as many brands on here as possible spending money on their platform. So they try to make it as seamless, as easy as possible. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it. And um, so that's how you add the page. The next thing you wanna add is an ad account. So if we scroll down here, I've added in a test ad account. And again, it's very, very simple to add an ad account. So if we go over here to ads, and then we go to create new ad accounts, because this is a new business suite, it's not gonna let me create more than one ad account. But if you're just setting this up, you simply click create an ad account, and then you go ahead and you create it. If the brand you're working with already has an ad account, then you just click on claim an existing ad account, and you go ahead and add their existing ad account by using their ad account ID, which is this number here. So you just get the brand or you get the company or whoever it is you're working with, the client to send you their ad account ID. And then when you click this, you click on claim an existing ad account, it's gonna prompt you to put in their ad account ID, and you just simply put it in, and then it will send a request from them uh, to access their ad account. So really, really simple. That's the ad account. The next thing you wanna connect is an Instagram account. So I've added a dummy Instagram account here. The exact same process, you click on add, and then it will prompt you to go and sign in to your Instagram account, and then you go ahead and sign in on it, and then it will pop it up. You might have to review or uh, confirm your email on the Instagram side of things, but then that is you with access to the Instagram account. And then you're 90% of the way there. The next thing we need to do is after we've done our business portfolio info, after we've added any people, after we've added pages, our ad account, our Instagram account, the next thing that we're going to do is to add a pixel. So 
Facebook used to call this pixel. You can see pixel is still here, but now they are calling it data sets. So when you click into pixel, I'm not even sure this will load. Um, yeah, so that we've made some changes to our platform. You can now find this asset in the data sources menu. So they've changed it up a little bit. It's now in data sets and I've added a test pixel in here. A pixel is essentially how you are going to track the information. So how you're going to track clicks, how you're going to track conversion. Pixel is the algorithm that Facebook or Meta uses in order to track everything. It's very, very powerful and they make it actually very easy to assign. So you add in a pixel, you just call it whatever, add it in. I've added in a test pixel for us. So we're gonna use this one. So essentially what we're gonna do is here, we're gonna go on the test pixel and we're gonna click open in events manager. It's gonna pop open this. So once we are in events manager, we want to either manually add the pixel code to our client's website, or we want to do a web plugin. So if we go down here to say set up pixel, it's gonna give us these two prompts. So install code manually or check for partner. 99% of the time you will be able to add through a partner. So if we click on check through a partner, it gives you all the main web hosting brands. Like 99.9% .9 of people are going to be using one of these and then you just click on them and then you go through the prompt and then you go through the sequence and you add it that way. It's very, very simple. It takes about five minutes. If they have some sort of a custom or high end, high level website, you can install the code manually. Now you will need to use the client or the brand's uh, web developer or whoever they use to build their website to do this because you kind of need to be a web developer to install code. Um, but again, it's very simple. You just click on install code. It'll give you the code. You copy the code and then you can send that to whoever handles our website. Really, really simple. And then that is the pixel setup. Again, the pixel is what's gonna track the conversions. It's what's gonna track the metrics. I'm gonna show you how that looks on Ads Manager now in a second, but it's really, really important we get that set up because if the pixel isn't set up, then we're not gonna be able to track everything. And that's how Facebook is so powerful because it's tracking is so effective. Okay, now that we have the pixel set up, we are gonna go ahead and take a look in the Ads Manager. So we're gonna go back to our business suite and we're going to go up here to our ad account. And then we scroll over here and we click on open in ads manager and it's going to take us to a dashboard that looks like this. So this is the Facebook ads manager and this is where all of your ads are going to be run from. You can see here we have campaigns, you can see here we have ad sets and then ads. And then down here you can see a lot of metrics, reach, impressions, cost per result amount spent. I'm gonna get into what all these mean and how you can use them very, very soon. But this is the ads manager and this is where you're going to create your campaigns from. This is where you're gonna run all your campaigns from. This is kind of the real mecca for where the ads are actually going to take place and this is where the magic happens. So we're gonna get into how that all works very, very soon. So you can see here, I have set up a test campaign, but all you need to do in order to get your campaign started is you go up here and you click on create. Now, because this is a brand new business suite and brand new ad account, it's asking us to submit information. We're not gonna worry about that just now, but the first thing that we are going to do is select what type of campaign objective. And you can see here, there are various different options. So you have awareness, you have traffic, engagement, leads, app promotion and sales. And you can see it actually gives you what they're all good for. So let's go through each one. So awareness. So Meta and Facebook are telling us this is good for reach, brand awareness, video views, store location awareness. Then traffic, we have link clicks, landing page views, Instagram profile visits, messenger, Instagram and WhatsApp. Then engagement, we have messenger, Instagram and WhatsApp, video views, post engagement conversions. Like there's a little bit of crossover you'll notice. Uh, amongst them, then leads. This is what we are going to be worrying about. If you're running an agency, a lead gen agency, usually for uh, brick and mortar businesses, you are going to be creating lead campaigns, mainly through instant forms. That's what we're gonna be focusing on now. Then you have app promotion, obviously for app installs, app events, and then you have sales, which is obviously conversion campaigns, maybe for like an e-commerce brand or someone who's driving something that's actually for sale, um, like a product or a t-shirt or a supplement that's for sale for 10, 20 or 30 bucks, you're driving a sales or conversion campaign. But for the purpose of this video, we are going to be focusing on lead campaigns. So we are going to select that, and then we are going to select continue. And then Facebook and Meta are going to pop up with this prompt. So choose a campaign setup. Create your leads campaign using a recommended setup to maximize performance, or manually build your campaign. Suggestions may vary based on your recent ad account activity. So we're gonna go with the recommended settings because Facebook or Meta are massively pushing this and it's because their algorithm has become so strong over the years. Facebook really, really trust their algorithm and all the leaders in the industry, Sam Ovens, Alex Hermosi, all the top, top guys are now going super broad and using 
Facebook streamlined algorithm recommended settings. So we're gonna go with that and we're gonna click on continue. And then we are met with this. So you can see here, we have three different sections. So the top here is our campaign. The second section is our ad set. And the third section is our ad. And I'm gonna go into each of them in detail. But what I want you to remember is the top section, which is the campaign is like an overview. The second section, which is the ad set, is the audience or targeting. And the third section, which is down here, which is the ad itself, is the creative. So it's the picture, the copy, the video, whatever you're using to actually call out to your audience. So first and foremost, we are going to label the campaign. So it's really, really important that all your labeling is really, really concise and clear and you understand it. Because as you start building out loads and loads of campaigns and they're not labeled correctly, you're gonna get very confused very quickly, trust me from experience. So for this example, for this video, we're gonna use roofing. So let's call this lead form and let's call this roofing 25% off. So let's say for this example, we are running ads for a roofing company that's offering 25% off their service. So then as we scroll down, you can see here you have special ad categories. We do not need to worry about that. If you click on this, this is for credit, employment, housing, social issues. We don't need to worry about any of that for now. And then as we come here, we have Advantage Campaign Budget Plus. We don't need to worry about that just yet. And then we have A-B testing. So if you wanna test this, if you have say a copy or if you have a creative that you're not sure on, let's say you have two creatives and you're not sure which one would work best or which one would you know you wanna use, you can do A-B testing and then Facebook will actually tell you what one is working best. But that's it, let's leave it at that and let's go to next into the ad set. So now here we are in ad sets and in ad set, this is where we're going to really target our demographic or target our avatar in terms of who we're going after. So this is where we really get into you know, the meat and bones of how this is gonna work and this is where we get very, very um, technical with our Facebook ads. So again, let's label it. So we're gonna label this. So I'm gonna do a 10 mile radius around London um, and then we're gonna label this 10 miles and we're, again, we're gonna call it lead form and then we are gonna do roofing 25% off. So we're gonna call it 10 miles lead form roofing 25% off. And you can see here it's nice and labeled correctly and this is kind of making sense. We know this is now differentiated by a 10 mile radius. So as discussed, we're going to be using instant forms. For any of you that don't know what an instant form is or haven't used an instant form on Facebook before, it's kind of when you scroll past an ad and you click on it and it pops up a form that you have to fill out kind of like this. And um, you've probably seen it a lot if you use Facebook and it's just a good way for us to get leads and pre-qualify leads with questions. And we're gonna get into that in detail now in a second. So let's get back into the ads manager. So we're using instant forms. We have that selected and now we wanna select our Facebook page. So if you are using your client's Facebook page, it would be added to your meta business suite and then you would just select it in here. I've selected a dummy page for this, but that is where you would select your client's Facebook page. We then choose our performance goals. For this, I've chosen maximize number of leads. It's where they're gonna show the ads to the people most likely to share their contact information with you. It doesn't make a massive difference, so it doesn't really matter which one you go with, but I'm gonna stick with that. You can also optionally put in what you want to spend to get a result. So this simply means you wanna tell Meta what you want to spend to get a lead. So let's say you wanted to get a lead for $5, you would put in $5 here, and that tells Meta that's how much you wanna to spend to get a lead. Now, because this is a brand new ad account, and depending on your experience, depending on your client's ad account experience, I would just leave this blank and let Facebook get some results first, let Meta get some results first, let the algorithm do its thing, and then you can come back here and put this in once you have more information. Because right now, if you're brand new, if you're a brand new ad account, if you haven't run campaigns before, you're not gonna know what your cost per result is or what your you know, target cost per result is. So, so let Facebook do its thing and let's get some data and then we can go back and change this. So the next thing then is the budget and schedule and we are gonna put in a daily budget. For this campaign, I'm gonna put in a daily budget of $20. I wouldn't go any lower than $10 and you know, ideally when you're working with a client, you want to have at least a monthly spend of around $1,000. Anything below that, you're really gonna to struggle to get results. It's a common question I get asked all the time, you know, what should the monthly ad spend be? Or I have a new client and they've asked me what our monthly ad spend should be. There's no magic number, but really the more you have, the more you have to test, the more money you have to kind of put out there and find out what creatives, what copy, what audiences will work. And um, so the answer is the more the better but I would say minimum $1,000 per month to really get some decent results. So for this test campaign, I'm going to put in $20 and then you have your schedule further on down from it. 
It's saying here it's in the past, so I'm just gonna put it till tomorrow. Obviously you can put this to whenever you want your campaign to start, but it's totally up to you. Budget scheduling, then we're not gonna worry about that. Don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, the next thing is audience controls. And this is actually gonna be a lot simpler than it would have been in the past because we have chosen the Advantage Plus campaign type on Meta on Facebook. So they are doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us. However, if we go back and we remember the campaign, I'm doing a 10 mile radius around London for this example. Um, so 17 kilometers, it won't let me do miles, 17 kilometers. And actually we could go back up and change the name of this. Uh, so let's change that to London 10 miles, just so there's more clarity there if we're ever going back and checking these. And if we go back down to audience, if you wanted to change this, you simply click on this. And then if you wanted to add in another one, you would simply go to include and then you would search whatever San Diego and it would pop up San Diego and you could click on that and include it. I'm not going to do that because we're just doing London. Um, but that is really, really simple in terms of location. You just type in location and add it and then add your radius beside it here. So that is that. Um, in terms of age, we're not going to mess with that because Facebook is going to do all the heavy lifting there. You can exclude audiences, but for this example, not really relevant. You can also add languages, but again, um, because we're tar targeting London, Facebook knows that the main language here is English, so you don't need to mess around with that. Um, and that is that. Then if we scroll down, we can see Advantage Plus Audience. So we can actually add in an audience here to give uh, Meta and Facebook a hand. Um, so we could add in a lookalike audience or we could add in a specific audience with specific interests. And this is gonna give Facebook a bit of a leg up and it's gonna be like, okay, this is what they're looking for. We're gonna implement this into our algorithm and it's gonna help us find the, our target audience even quicker. However, in my experience and in the people I speak to and with my media buyers and the people in the space, um, they're testing this because this all this is pretty new. The difference isn't that much. So if I was just starting out to avoid any confusion to just make sure this is as streamlined as possible, I would just literally do exactly what I just said. Down the line, you can split test this against campaigns where you're not using it to see if it converts better. Um, but for now, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, I would keep it all as streamlined as possible. And then placements. This is basically where Facebook or Meta are going to place your ad in different types of ad placements throughout Instagram and Facebook. And basically it'll see where it's converting the best, whether it's an Instagram story or Instagram feed, the same with Facebook, it'll kind of see where it's getting the most clicks, where your target avatar or target client is hanging out the most. And then it will obviously put more of the ad spend, put more of the creatives in there, therefore getting you more leads. So that is basically what that means. And I would recommend you keep that on. But over here on the right hand side, based on what we have done, you can see the estimated audience size is 3.5 to 4 million. It also gives you, you know, kind of like a table here, whether your audience is specific, uh, kind of medium or broad. Um, ours is in the green zone, which is good. And then down here, it gives us our estimated daily results. So on a spend, I believe it was of $20. If we go back up on a, yes, so $20 on a daily spend of $20, it's telling us that we're gonna reach 2.6 to 7.4K uh, potential leads. And of that, eight to 32 of them are going to fill out our form. So it gives you a really, really good idea of the kind of results you can expect for this type of campaign. Um, and it's obviously very, very good to know if you're trying to track KPIs or if you're trying to give a client an idea of what kind of results they can expect. Facebook is literally giving you expected daily results so you can give clients feedback in real time. So that is the audience targeting and ad set section of our ad campaign. As I say, Facebook and Meta wanna keep this as seamless, as easy as possible so people can come on this platform without getting overwhelmed and spend money and keep coming back and spending money. So without further ado, we are going to go through to the ad. So the ad section is where we actually create the creative and copy. And this is what it looks like. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to rename. So let's say that we were using a video ad. We are gonna call this video. So we're gonna use the exact same name as all the rest, except we're gonna add in video. So we're gonna call this 10 miles and then lead form roofing 25% discount. So that way everything is labeled, everything looks good and you can see exactly the differentials here in lead form in the campaign, roofing 25% off. Then in the ad set, we can see we're targeting London 10 miles. And then here in the ad, we can see this is a video ad. And this is gonna be really useful because if you're testing other video ads, you can call it video two or video three. And then if you're testing graphics, you can call it graphic two, three. And it makes it really, really easy to differentiate between your different ad creatives. So as we scroll down, again, we can see the Facebook page and the Instagram account we want these ads to run from. And then we are going to go down and we are going to create our ad. We're going to click off multi-advertiser ad. 
and um, because we don't want that to appear alongside our ads and then we can start creating our ad there are a ton of softwares out there you can use to create really high quality Facebook ads, but by far my favorite is Canva. And this is Canva Pro, and it is so, so powerful. And you can see I've just typed in roofing into their Facebook ad section, and I've put a few filters on here, and I've selected videos, and you can see here there are just tons and tons of really, really high quality ads. Like these all look pretty good. Um, and you can go in, if you click on this, you click on customize template, and it is so, so intuitive and so, so easy to come in here and you know play around with this and change it. You know, up here we've got the logo. You can literally change this to whatever you want. So let's call this Dylan Roofing. So, so easy just to go in there and change this up. You can change this, you can literally change everything. It is so, so simple. Every single part of this is so simple. Canva is by far the best graphic design software and I am not very creative and I'm not very, I'm not a very good graphic designer, but I can get by on Canva, absolutely. So um, this is it, and you can just play it like this. Isn't like the most you know technical, high quality video, but you can see the guys moving here, and videos do convert better than graphics. Uh, so this is a pretty decent ad, and I mean, like if you're just starting out and you've got a roofing client, all you have to do is come in here, stick on their logo, play around with it, maybe change it. You know, if their colors are red and green, change this to red and green. You simply go up here and you can change this to um, green like that. Um, and then you go up here and you change green to like that, like that, and then literally just go around this, changing all of the different colors um, to green and to their brown colors, really, really simple. Probably looks a bit better with orange, um, but we will put it in just for this example. Change this last one, change it to green, and then boom, we've changed it to different brown colors. Like that was so, so simple. And you would add in their logo and add in whatever else they do or testimonials, obviously add in all of the information that's relevant to that business. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go up here and you wanna click on share. And then you wanna click on download. Make sure that MP4 video is selected and then you want to download the video and then it will start downloading and download it into your computer. And then boom, you have a Facebook creative and you are ready to rock. It's that simple. Like literally if you went on Canva and you spent like an hour or two going through all their different creatives, you could literally have a month's worth of creatives. You could test so many different creatives on this. There is so much you can do with Canva. So I'd highly recommend, you don't even need the pro version. I just like having the pro version because it unlocks higher quality creatives and you're able to do more with the software. So. You don't even need that, but I would go on Canva and that is how you're going to get your creative. So we've now made our creative and I've downloaded it to the computer. So we are going to go back to our ads manager where we left off over here and we are going to select ad media and we simply go to add video. Once you click on add media, you're going to upload your image by clicking on your files and then you are going to go to crop. So after uploading our creatives, Facebook was telling me that they needed optimize and that the right sizes were not uploaded. So I went back to Canva and simply clicked on resize and then resized it for an Instagram post and an Instagram story. And then was given out these and then I uploaded them to Facebook and it was allowed then to make 18 placements with the ads, which is really, really good. Uh, so let's click out of those and clean this up. And you can see here, when you scroll down, you can see where it's placed. So if I click on this, these are all the places where it is placed. And then if I click on that, it shows us what the ad looks like. Looks pretty good, looks nice. Video, the guy's moving. I think the green actually looks better than the orange. Goes with the logo here of the dummy account. And I think it all looks pretty good. So that is our media placements. And it's made really, really easy with Canva and with the way Facebook lay it all out. So that is that. Ultimately, Facebook will place this where it works best. So wherever this is getting the best results, that's where Facebook will place it or that's where Meta will place it. So let's now scroll down to the test aspect and let's click off the ad preview. So primary text is your main copy. This is gonna be the copy of your ad. And there's obviously a thousand different ways you can write copy. You know, people have different theories and people have different strategies for how you can make copy super effective. Um, what I would do if I were you, what my recommendation is, go to Facebook ad library and type in the keyword that you are going after. So for this example, we are using roofing. So I just went over to Facebook ad library, typed in roofing, and it's given me 35,000 ads around roofing. Look at all these ads. If you research this for hours, you would come up with some really good copy. You would come up with some really, really good copy. Here's one here, let's click on it. Uh, let's see, see ad details. And 
and then it's taken us to this and then let's click on it again oh it's taking it back here see add details here's some copy i like this your roof's not getting any younger and it's giving the price straight away which is quite interesting and um, but yeah this is some really really good copy they're using emojis i like the copy like this is a really good one i like this and again, if you're doing some research, you can research this for a couple of hours and you'll find really, really good copy options. But that is what I would recommend for your copy. And if we go back to Ads Manager, that is where you're gonna put in the copy. So let's use that guy's example. He was saying, so let's get out of the way. Facebook's AI out of the way. But yeah, your guy was saying your, your roof isn't getting any younger. So this is where your copy is gonna be. So your primary text is that main section of his ad. So this section here, this is the primary text. Your headline is the next thing. So let's go back to this. You can see now it has implemented our copy. Your headline is what's going to be down here. So you could use 25% off roof repairs or whatever it is that you are offering or that your client is offering. So 25% off roof repairs. You can see that now shows up there. Um, and that is the headline. Again, go back to Facebook ad library and see what headlines are working really, really well. Then your description is what goes under this. And this could be something like 5,000 or whatever. This could be like 500 five-star reviews or 1,000 five-star reviews, whatever it may be. That is what's going to go underneath your headline. And then underneath that, you just have your call to action. Um, I prefer learn more. Um, but you can really use any of these, whatever it works for your offer, it doesn't matter too much. Um, but I would use Learn More depending on your niche, I like Learn More. Advantage Plus Creatives is just where Facebook take your creative and they make adjustments. So you can see here they're making some adjustments to our creative so it fits on certain types of things. You can leave this on, see how it goes. It doesn't make a huge difference right now because we've uploaded three different types of creatives. So Facebook won't be messing around with it too much because we've actually already done that ourselves. But you can leave this on for now or turn it off. It doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, but that is what that is. And then we are nearly there. The last thing is going to be creating your form. And we simply click on create form. And then let's call this our 25% discount form. And then we are going to add our questions. So the first thing they ask you to do is select what you want the form to do. So do you want to use it to get a quick fill in and submit? Or do you want higher intent, add a review step? Or do you want a rich creative that's going to hold your audience attention? I would go for with more volume or higher intent, not massively important at this stage. Um, but I would go with one of those. Then we want to go to our intro. You can upload an image which will go here or you can use your ad creative. I would probably upload an image that looks a little bit better than the ad creative because it mightn't fit. Um, but either or, because obviously it's giving you the size here, but you can easily go to Canva and put in this. You know, you can go to, as I say, when you click on your template, you can go here on Canva Pro and you can resize it really, really easily. So that's what I would do. And um, just to make sure everything's high quality, then you can add a greeting. You can add something like, 25 then you can put in whatever here fill out this form this is obviously i'm just using this as an example you would put some more time and effort into this to make sure it converts well but you can see how this works so you can add a greeting um, and then once that's done you scroll down and you click on questions now for questions facebook automatically have email and full name because facebook already have that information from people's profiles so what happens is people can just click on this and facebook will automatically fill this out and make sure they're showing up as a lead on your back end but they will be really low quality because they're not actually filling anything out so what we can do is we can add in questions like let's put in a contact feed so let's add in a phone number and what else can we add in? We could add in user information, or that's already done. You can also add in custom questions. So if we go up here, we can add in multiple choice. We can add in short answer, conditional. I'm gonna add in a short answer question here saying, uh, describe the current condition of your roof. That could be a good question to ask. Obviously you are going to know your niche better than me. So you're gonna have a, a much better idea of what questions would work well. Can drag this down here. You could add another question asking them, would you like us to reach out regarding a huge discount please include contact details you could add a, add a question you could add a question like that and then you can see here over on the right hand side the questions are populating and um, so this is essentially how we create our form and then you add your questions you go down to privacy policy for privacy policy you will have to put in a link so you know you're gonna have to put in the brand or the company that you're working with link and then link text you can change the link to say whatever you want you can add a disclaimer and then you can also add a message for leads once they fill it out this is really really important 
So you can either send them to the brand's website, to your client's website, or you can ask them to give you a call, which is really, really good. So you can put in the brand's name and a call to action. And this is a really, really good way of getting inbound leads for your clients. So not only are you acquiring data, are you acquiring leads in the form of their name, number, email, you can actually get them to inbound call you. And this can be very, very powerful and a really good way to get leads for quick wins for your clients. So again, there's not too much to forms. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just go in here and put in whatever you think would work well for your client and then put in a CTA and then you go and click create form. This probably won't let me create because I've left a good bit of information out. Yeah, so we're just gonna save that as draft um, and then we're gonna get out of here, okay. And then that is basically it. The last thing you need to do is set up your CRM. And to set up your CRM, you simply click set up and it's gonna take you to the advanced manager. And then this is where you can implement your go high level account. So if you go to your events manager and you go to overview and then click connect data sources, you can connect your CRM. Now, I'm not gonna do it in this video because connecting the go high level account is a very, very quick process, very simple process. And uh, most of you watching this will know what go high level is and know how it works. And that is essentially how you can have your CRM connect to ads manager and have your leads shoot across there once they do connect and it's a really good way to have a CRM set up so once the prospects or whoever your client is having fill out these forms once they fill it out not only they're going on Facebook's database they're shooting across to your go high level CRM and it's just one place where you can manage everything and send those leads over to your client and that is it once you have all of that done you go ahead and click on publish and your campaign will go into review and so if we go out here and close we will see our campaign here and then we go into ad set, we can see the campaign ad set here. And then when we go ads, we can see it here. And you can see how it really helps to have it all labeled really, really um, in detail because you know exactly what's what. Here's our ads, you can see our creative there. Here's our ad set. You can see it's 10 mile radius around London. And then the campaign, you can see it's the roofing 25% off campaign. And that is basically it. Facebook will accept this and then this campaign will go live. And it is as simple as that. Facebook make this so, so simple and so seamless, as I've said about a hundred times in this video for you to spend money on this platform and that is it that is literally how you get a campaign live and you can see how simple it is to get effective and efficient campaigns live for your agency clients on meta's new business suite and ads man what is going on everyone dylan again and i hope you found that video valuable i hope you found it useful i want to tell you about my free community agency accelerator free this is a free community on school that is literally giving away the most insane amount of value completely free of charge and if you go into the community, you will see here, there is so much going on here. Um, but if you are an existing or new agency owner and you wanna scale your agency, there is not a better free resource in the market. If we go into the course here, the Agency Accelerator course, you can see the amount of lessons and value in here. Like it is just insane. All of this, over 200 lessons, completely for free. So if you are looking to scale your agency, if you're looking to get to 10K per month in the next 90 to 120 days, Check out Agency Accelerator free. It's linked below underneath the video and I hope to see you inside.